What's up guys, I'm Dirty H and welcome back to Europe in Detail. For those of you that may be new to the series, Europe in Detail is intended to cover some of the more smaller or unique European architecture and towns. This can include places of interest like churches, cemeteries and castles. And each little town I'm building, I'm really trying to represent a certain type of architecture. Maybe it's a country or a certain style of building. But we started with Gottsburg, our little medieval town, and maybe it's sort of a thousand years old or older. There's lots of little wee town squares and lots of history in here. And the second little town that we've moved on to and we're currently building in is Borgovino. And this is about 800 years old. It's based on the Italian coastal cities in the Cinque Terre. And you can quite clearly see that this is very unique and unlike any other part of the world. So that is a little background on the series and maybe a little indication of where we're going in future. For those of you that are returning, welcome back. And in this episode, we build something very, very cool. This particular part of the Cinque Terre is well known for its winemaking. And we did touch on this in an earlier episode very briefly. But in this episode we are indeed building a winery up in the hills and we're also going to build this really cool funicular access. The winery up on the hill is completely my idea, but the workers that work all the vineyards on the hill or the nearby surrounding hills in real life actually use funiculars to get up and down to the vineyards, which I thought was really really cool. So I guess this is just an extension of that idea. There's also a funicular in La Spezia, which is the biggest nearby village near the Cinque Terre. So there's definitely been a bit of influence from there as well. So that is where the inspiration has come from for this episode, so let's get into it. So the first thing that I needed to do was go onto the Steam Workshop and get a funicular. And I've found this one here, I can't remember who it's from, but I've hooked that up. And basically what I really want to do up here is I want to put some little industry cubes up here and make real workers come up and work this vineyard. So I set out everything very crudely to start with here just to make sure everything works. I also want to see where people walk and how they enter and exit the funicular so that I can detail around that to suit. So after I get all of that set up, I leave the game running for a while and whip off for a quick coffee and then I can come back and see exactly where everyone's walking, how they're entering and exiting, where they're standing to enter and exit the actual funicular vehicle and things like that and I can set out all my paths and stuff to suit. I do have a basic idea in my head of what I want this to look like but I'm also keeping it flexible enough to work with where the citizens are moving. So for instance I know where I'd like to place a door but if that's not where they're entering and exiting the funicular station then I'd have to sort of rethink my plans. So if you haven't guessed already, I'm going to make these completely custom, both stations. And we start here with the top one where it's going to meet the vineyard. I found some nice old stone walls here that we're going to use. And these Italian style roofs from Zarix that you see me using here, I eventually changed to something else because they just don't look right here, I didn't think. And I really want to try and achieve two different things up here. I want this to very much still look like it's a vineyard that's being worked with employees up here running around and stuff like that. But I'd also like a really nice restaurant up here with some cube services so that people can actually come and eat and have some wine at the winery. And with our funicular access back down, we don't have to worry about having an extra glass or three. And the other thing that I want to do up here is I want to make a little walking path. So there's an actual tour that goes around the winery and I'm a little bit ashamed, but I only just found out the other day that you can have walking tours in the game. If you go to the sightseeing bus tab in the public transport, there's walking tours there and you can set in points of interest, which is just fantastic. This is a real game changer for me and this little town, obviously, because it's almost completely pedestrian. And it also means that we can set up a proper walking tour along our blue trail that we set up last episode. So getting back to what we're doing here, part of this little pedestrian tour is going to come back over the funicular and carry on on the other side of the tracks. And I finished this area off here with a bit of scrub. I don't want this to look perfect. The vineyards are going to look quite well kept, but the rest of the area is just a little overgrown. And as we move around and up the hillside, 
I put in a couple of buildings here that are just general farm buildings really. The tour is also carrying on through this part so I set out some stairs here so that the citizens on the tour have got some decent access up the hillside here. We've also got some nice well kept grounds around here and just a random wooden shed and I finished this particular part off here with just a bit more scrub here and there and some random trees. So with this part here I'm trying to create the inside of the winery grounds. I want to build an old wooden pergola hanging off the side of this main building here where the outdoor restaurant's going to sit and we're also going to have some really nice well kept grounds in here with flowers and such around. And you can also see our pedestrian paths coming through this area and where it goes on to the smaller little wee narrow one that's where our tour is going to start from. And I guess with this whole area, I've really just tried to keep it looking old and, you know, like I mentioned earlier, still being worked. There's nothing fancy about it. There's no glass or anything modern up here. It's just an old winery that has a lot of beautiful old charm. I can't believe the game had these walking tours and I didn't find them earlier. It's really crazy. I was only complaining about this in the last episode. And setting up these couldn't be easier. We just set them up like any other public transportation route except they work on pedestrian paths. I'm not quite sure how the points of interest work yet, but I'm hoping that the citizens stand around in that particular area for a while just looking around because I've tried to set three or four points along the trail here where I think it's interesting and there'd be something worth stopping and looking at. So I finish off putting this tour in, then slip a cube service up here for a little bit of entertainment, and those are the last things to do up here. And there's a really nice vibe up here, and the view from the restaurant is pretty spectacular. So we've got our paths around this bottom station here that we put in earlier. We know they're working, they're giving access to people that are using the funicular to get to the winery. So these other paths here are just an extension of those. And what I want to try and do here is I want to create pathways that go up very steep. These are going to be stairs eventually going up either side of the funicular. There's a little bit of inspiration here from Lisbon, but mostly La Spezia like I mentioned earlier. So I'm trying to raise up the path here in the middle and create a bit of a lump so that I've got some height to get over the funicular. I want to put a little wee bridge that links the two sides here in the middle. And this also links back off and down to a path that we put in earlier on the right hand side. So all in all this is also a very efficient way for the citizens to walk if they need to get from the higher parts of the town to the train station for instance. So once I was happy with the pedestrian paths, you see me there use node controller to sharpen up some of these interior angles. I can come through with the stairs now and procedural objects and just fit these to suit. I like to just cover these paths with the stairs because using the invisible paths mod means it turns these stairs into 8 meters wide and the citizens start clipping through the sides and through buildings and walking on fresh air. 
so it's much easier to use these narrow paths to get them to walk exactly where I want. It just means, of course, that I have to cover them. But it was very important that I got these stairs in first because all of the buildings that we're going to place up here are going to have access off of these stairs. So in terms of placing those buildings, most of them are procedural objects, except for this very first area here that you see me working on. There is a road that's accessing these buildings, so these don't get turned into PO, these stay as actual buildings. So this helps generate a bit more foot traffic in the area, and it was quite the slow process putting these in. I knew that it would be, um, but that's okay, I was prepared to take my time. So I want these original buildings that I had up in this area of the town to sort of flow over and up to the funicular that we've just installed. So it all looks seamless and monolithic. So as we move on to the other parts of this little area, I try and keep as many buildings non-PO as I can and have them functioning correctly. But some of this terrain is just so steep that I have to turn them into PO so I can manipulate them to fit correctly. Even though these buildings are pretty much here for show and no citizens are going to have any real need to enter them, I still want to make it look like they have good access. This is a really rugged steep piece of terrain here and this was quite difficult. So I decided just to flip a set of stairs around 90 degrees to the side and then just fit them back into these original stairs the best I can. This also involved putting in a couple of retaining walls between the levels because the elevation changes really extremely in this particular part here. And I know I had made things difficult for myself wanting these stairs running up either side of the funicular, but they were a really big part of the vision that I was running off here and yeah, like I say, that was really what made it difficult was trying to match back into those stairs a lot of the time. So next we put more buildings in and you can see we're following the curvature of this road that sits probably about 15 metres below these buildings. This is the natural curve of the land here and I know that we're moving away from the station a little bit here but it made sense to sort of complete this whole little inner peninsula here as we go. Now with the station we go hardcore detailing and it starts with the stuff that we need so we know where the citizens are standing and at what heights so we pull all the floors up i also put some buildings around the very edge of the funicular i want it to look like the station here is built up on top of these buildings and there's a natural hill here but you'll get a clearer picture of that as we go so I'm not sure why, and it might just be me and the way I've placed it, but this station has a lot of clipping, sort of straight from the workshop. It looks like the funicular vehicle is going straight through a part of it, and it's actually quite awkward to detail around. I have to use a couple of sneaky techniques to hide the way that the vehicle comes in, for instance, but I guess it just makes for some interesting detailing. Now I flip around to the other side and start doing the final detail. So out here it's mainly gardens around this pedestrian path that we've had running and I also put like a little area out here for children in the middle. I also put up the first wall on the side of the funicular station and it's a big stone arch wall and I start that little bit of sneaky detailing I mentioned earlier here to hide the vehicle coming in and it's basically just our black doors with these big old stone pillars around it. There's also a section here where our pedestrian path runs through so I'm sure to put a couple of prop doors in there so that it looks like they're walking in and out of the building. And the black doors I mentioned earlier are just exactly that. They're black open looking doors and that's the best way I can make it look like the vehicle's just entering and exiting a void as it goes in and out of the station. So with the station pretty much done, now I've got to put the lid on it or the roof. And after a bit of thought, I've decided to stick with the same roof or the same building that we used up at the top station. 
and obviously just modified it with procedural objects and squeezed it down so it's just a roof and I've split it into three different roofs here to cover all the areas that we need and then just tried to make them all look like they're one with different pitches. Now one unfortunate side effect from doing the roof this way is that it's completely invisible from underneath so I need to put down these double sided surface networks and strategically fit them underneath so that we can't see straight up. In future I want to get some nice cinematic shots from inside the station and yeah having an invisible roof's not going to cut it. So just quickly, unfortunately I lost the footage from detailing the inside of the funicular station which is a bit of a bugger but it was actually quite simple in there. There's just a few ticket machines and some fences around here and there. There's also one part I made with some barriers around it that looks like it's sort of having some maintenance done to it. In terms of the rest of the detail for the area, I put all these lights in, change it to night so I can see how it looks. I'm after sort of a softer glow around this area and we also put some internal lighting in the station. I use a ceiling light and push it up with move it so that it's flush with the ceiling and we really only need one of these in the middle because the glow is pretty good. And around the outside of the station I've chose to use like a softer yellowy orange type of glow. There's also a few old school hanging lights which I put around the place I think they look really neat. And overall I am very pleased with how this has come out. I love how we can see through the arches on each side and see the vehicle coming in and all the people and it looks great at night. So here I'm making my way up the other side of the funicular tracks putting the buildings in the same way or predominantly the same way that I did on the other side. There is however a couple of small differences. I put a 150 entertainment block up here which brings heaps of people and I also put like a bit of a hotel and a pool area up here as well. Aside from that we run some wooden decks around the back of these houses looking back up the valley just for something a little bit different and then I finish the surrounding area off with a little bit of scrub and we put in some fruit trees here and there because obviously we need those to make wine. I would like to expand on these vineyards however in a future episode. You'll also see me whip around here and put in the last of the detailing so I want some table and chairs jammed down some of these alleys, we put in some bush and some ivy creeping here and there, there's also a really nice archway that I put in and we finished the pedestrian bridge across the funicular with a really nice stone bridge.
can officially chalk off another point of interest in the town. After what happened with Gottsberg and me having to delete most of it because of me going way too crazy, I made a point to myself here to keep this as traditional looking as I could, and I really think it blends in nicely. The arches let us peer in and just see enough to invite us in and grab our attention. Apart from the odd mad dog biking up the stairs, everything's running really nicely. It's really cool and quite interesting watching the funicular vehicles go up and down the hill. And considering that the train station we have in Borgovino is 99% underground, this sort of makes up for it. Because I really love watching, you know, things work and move around. And believe it or not, our winery is actually supporting employment and it's making money. And also our walking tour is going off, so job done. I want to thank you guys for coming along on the ride for this episode. It was a hell of a lot of fun building this. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching. And I need you guys to keep your suggestions rolling through for what you think I should base the next little town on. Because, yeah, we're only a couple of episodes away from moving on. And I really need to start thinking about getting some infrastructure in for that town. So thanks again for watching guys, hit that thumbs up, it helps me out heaps, and I will see you on the next episode of Europe in Detail. See you guys.